Hello, I'm Adi. I'm here at CSUN 2019 with Gerard from WebM. Hi, Gerard. Hello. How are you doing? Good. Very well, thank you. How's it going for you the last few days? Good. CSUN's awesome. It's rejuvenating and exhausting at the same time. That's a great way to actually <laughs> sum it up. Um, so WebAIM is, is a, a website that I use and, and many people use to get a lot of information regarding website accessibility. You guys do a lot of great work. But you're here, um, you've launched something really exciting. Can you tell us what it is? Sure. We published the results of an analysis of the home pages for the top one million websites. So it's an automated analysis for accessibility that detected patterns of inaccessibility yeah. and um, results show pretty pervasive and significant accessibility issues generally across home pages on the web. So one million websites you mm -hmm. tested. So what was the what was the result? Because I always tell people yeah. like 80% of websites aren't accessible, or 90, but these are numbers that are anecdotal to me. What what was your result of the, the 1 million? Yeah, so um, lots of errors um, that were detectable. We right. found on average about 60 errors per home page, so wow. a user with a disability uh, encountering an average home page would expect to encounter 60 errors. They're, they're detectable. Even a computer can figure those out. Right. As far as the conformance rate with the web content accessibility guidelines, yeah. as we map those errors to WCAG, we found that about 98% of pages failed those wow. guidelines. So quite quite significant. Now this is only home pages, sure. but that was uh, quite interesting. Kind of gives you an insight to what the rest of the, the site would probably be like. It does. Yeah. And we have data that shows a correspondence between home page errors and types of errors and pages that are present throughout the rest of the, the so site. Usually home pages tend to have a, a few more right, okay. errors, but there's usually a correspondence between those. So these are detectable errors, you said. So this is errors that the, uh, is it the WebM tool? That yeah, wave, wave, yeah, the wave, wave tool, wave tool uh -huh. that, that detects. So in addition, if, if you were to manually test, the, the, there could be other errors that would that would come up. There, there would be likely on, on most pages, sure. Okay, and so um, one million websites, did you handpick these one million? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there are a few different sources okay. for uh, determining top home pages. You know, we don't have access to like site visitor data for every home page on, sure. the, on the web. Mm -hmm. um, so there are some various sources that use things like uh, network traffic, mm -hmm. DNS lookups, uh, cross-linking, and uh, network uh, references, things like that, to try to determine the sites that have the most traffic and look up and cross references. So there are a few different data uh, data sources for right. those. Uh, we use two primary ones, kind of put them together to determine top home pages Got you. and then analyze those. Our, you know, our, our intent was not to find the top one million home pages, but to analyze a whole lot of home pages that are popular Got for you. accessibility. Lovely, wow, and um, I mean, it's a lot of data, obviously, in its early days. Are you um, can 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 you can you get different windows into this data? Like, can I find out the top financial organizations or or uh, clothing companies or anything like that? Yeah. So um, you know, we published an initial report that provides a lot of insight into the initial data that we have. We have 168 million data points right. in our database. Wow. There's a lot of information about each of those million pages right. uh, in regards to accessibility. Uh, so you can currently, uh, you know, we can break it down by like .coms versus .orgs versus .uk, right. things like that. Okay. Um, we don't have a lot of additional site metadata, like yeah. is it an entertainment site, a travel site. Um, you know, in the future we're going to do this research again, we're going to expand it to collect more of that type of information sure. to allow additional analyses and comparisons and insight into accessibility. And the real goal, the real intent of all of this is to have it be informative, have it be prescriptive, have people take this and then start to do something about it to improve accessibility. Be amazing. It provides a baseline today and then we'll start to measure changes over time. So you're saying people can actually will be able to use this data themselves, they'll be able to access it maybe in some way and, and find out research mm -hmm. uh, and investigate into what, how, what they want to see exactly. from we, the data, right? Yeah, we want to make the data open, we want to right. have collaborations on this and we want, we're, we're not even sure all the questions we need to ask of the data we have right now and sure. there's a lot more data out there that we can start to collect, but that's the intent is is to get useful data about accessibility on yeah. the web and allow people to 
to use it for Is, good. Was there was there any anything interesting that stood out to you from 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 the result? Something you didn't maybe expect or? Mm. Yeah, you know, I uh, the the number of errors was um, wasn't entirely surprising. Okay. But I was hopeful. I yeah. wanted it to be better. <laughs> <laughs> wanted it to be more positive, especially right. as you know someone that's been doing this work for a long time. Yeah. And our our mission at WebAIM is awareness. We we had hoped that things mm. would be more positive, but weren't surprised at where they were at. There were some interesting things, uh, really specific uh, data, like the types and, and numbers of errors, you know, mm -hmm. like over half of all inputs uh, on home pages are not labeled. And this, you know, most of these things are kind of basic accessibility sure. yeah. techniques, and to see, wow, over half of these are still a lot of work that needs yeah. to be done. Yeah. Um, you know, the correspondence of errors to uh, jQuery, we collected technology information about these home pages. Right. You know, did they use jQuery or React or PHP or did they have Doodle ads or maps and those kind of things. And um, sometimes I think in, in accessibility we tend to really pick on some of the frameworks, the newer frameworks and bash them for accessibility yeah, and yeah. the actual data didn't bear that out as well. Um, most of the frameworks caused increased number of errors yeah. but jQuery corresponded with the most number of detectable errors of all and other pages pages that have jQuery would have a lot more errors than uh, wow. pages that were simply relying on other frameworks. Now that doesn't mean that jQuery caused those errors yep. but uh, there's a strong correspondence. Those kind of things are um, were a little surprising and interesting but again hopefully people can, can take that and start to do something wow. to maybe address pages that have say jQuery. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, thank you for your time. That was really useful. Thank you. You bet. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.